Hello, and welcome to Tea and Strumpets. I'm Kelsey, and I'm here with the latest on D. And I'm going to talk about the non Regency romance books that I am waiting for. And I am very sorry if you're sick of book talk because. A lot of these are books that are in the book talk I love series, and I do love a lot of them. Although some of them haven't been getting as much love as I think they should. So we're going to talk about the next installments that I'm waiting for. And this is going to be the entire episode. So I'm really trying to pull in some people who have not heard of us. Hi, if you've been pulled in by Instagram and the fact that you like these books, hi, I'm Kelsey. I'm one half of the podcast, Tea and Strumpets. We mainly read Regency romance. You should give it a try in between your dark fantasy romances. Okay, first up, we're going to talk about a series that honestly, I can give or take, but it ended on such a cliffhanger that I really need this next book. So I'm talking about the Plated Prisoner series. This is Guild, Glint, Gleam, Glow, and next up is gold. And this is the last book in this series. It's book number five. It is not out yet. It does not. It does have an expected publication of this year, which is great. And this series is by Raven Kennedy. Now, this book started out strong as far as a steamy romance goes. It starts out with a harem situation happening. So it starts out real fast. And then the rest of the book is real not sexy times at all. But it does grow on me. I kind of had to push my way through book one. I wasn't as interested. And then it kind of picked up, picked up as we learned more about the world and the storytelling and all of that. So I am now into it. And it also ends on like the biggest cliffhanger ever. And I just need to hap- read what happens. Like if it goes downhill, I probably won't finish it. But I need to figure out what happens immediately because it got real crazy right at the end. So this next series that I cannot wait for the next book on is the Blood and Ash series by uh, Jennifer Armentrout. Armentrout? I've actually never tried to say her last name. So this is, that's my best guess here. Um, So we have From Blood and Ash, A Kingdom of Flesh and Fire, The Crown of Gilded Bones, The War of Two Queens, and the expected book out this year is A Soul of Ash and Blood. So that's very exciting. There is also a book six projected and a book seven. I don't know how there's going to be a book seven. I really was hoping that this would be the final book because it's it got crazy in the last book. We were like really setting up This seems like it's kind of a continuation series. I don't know if we actually need a book seven, but maybe book seven will take us on a different path. Who knows? I am excited for this one. This one was another one that honestly, like the synopsis on it wasn't that interesting. So I didn't read it for a long time. And then finally, I was I succumbed to book talk and I read it. And I was very impressed, actually. It is a different take on vampires and werewolves, which as someone who loves paranormal um, was really fun for me. I think that that's actually something that I find really intriguing with some of these books is there are some more twists on the vampire werewolf trend. And I, I guess I'm a sucker for that Twilight back in the days. I guess it really set me up for this. But I like the different idea. And it's gotten really wild. Now we're not just talking about vampires, shapeshifters. We're talking gods, like actual gods. They're crazy beings. And there's gods and then there's primal gods, which are two different things. So overall, I'm really intrigued by the world building. I do like the characters. There's some good spicy scenes, but inevitably, like they're just a background part of it. I could read this book. I could read this series without the spice. I don't need it. So that is why I went to it. Now, the next one is Crescent City, A Court of Thorns and Roses. Now, Crescent City 3 has been announced, thank Lord, because the ending of that, if you have not finished reading Crescent City 2, please God don't listen to this because I do not want to ruin for this. You need to skip ahead like two to three minutes while I say something really fast. Oh my effing God. The ending of that. I don't know how I feel about it, okay? I 
don't know how I feel about my two book worlds colliding. I don't really think I'm okay with it, but that being said, I'm intrigued to see what she does. I have really liked SJ Moss. I know that I thought it was overhyped. I know that Zoe has trouble reading A Court of Thorns and Roses. I keep telling her it's going to get better. She doesn't believe me. Um, And I really like the world building. I really like the characters. Crescent City is actually my least favorite of the series. I think it has some really good parts, but I honestly don't like Bryce that much. I'm sorry if that's a hot take, but it's how I feel. I don't like Bryce that much. I like all the other characters, which is why I keep reading. Hunt is actually not my favorite either. I will say, Hunt, Bryce, great together. They're not my faves. I'm very sad about Danica because she seemed awesome. But all the other side characters that are happening here, the freaking wolf, the werewolves, and that whole trend of like the different female alphas and all that things, the I'm very intrigued by the hellhound guy who was bad, but then was like a major character, turns out I'm very intrigued. And, I'm, and Rune and his potential like mate he doesn't know what mates are, which was crazy, but I'm very intrigued by all of this. So I am so excited and I'm so upset at the same time because we do have to wait until 2024 to get that book. But very interested. I am intrigued to see if writing number three gives us some more information about the world of A Court of Thorns and Roses because there is a lot of things that we are waiting for in that. We need to know who Azrael's mate is. We need to, I want to learn more about more. No one talks about more and what's going to happen with her. I want to know what's happening with her. I think that I loved, um, I love Nesta and Cassian. I loved their book. I thought it was really good. And I thought it was a bit wild at the end, but really good. So I am intrigued to see what happens more. And I agree with the take of Azriel and Elaine are not mates. She has a mate. There's no such thing as she can refuse the mate and maybe she decides to do that. But I, I need her. I really want to read her and Lucian's book because I find that very intriguing of a concept because he knows she's exists. He feels the pull of the mate. She has no interest, does not want him. And I'm very intrigued about how that's going to come up because that's a reluctant heroine type trope and guy falls first. Who knows if he's fallen first? I don't know. But that's a trope I really would love to explore. So I'm excited to learn more about this. And also I think Elaine's a secret badass. We know she's a secret badass because everyone protects her, but she has really been in, like, very been integral in a lot of things. So I need to learn more about her and her thought process and how she's feeling because she had a lot of trauma she had to deal with, and I want to learn more. We're down to the last two. Now, these two, I started out with the big ones, so stick with me here because these two are not talked about as much on Book Talk. They are recommended. It's how I found one of these, which is this next one. I love this one coming up. The next one took me a while to get into, but the heroine is very unlikable, but that's on purpose. So we have that. Okay. <clears throat> this is the Elf Queen series. Now, right now, it does not tell us when the third book is coming out on Goodreads. I believe though on Amazon, there is a third book that they're showing you there's definitely a third book because the second one ends on a major cliffhanger so there has to be a third book um but i do not know when it is coming out and that's very upsetting for me so this is by jm curl k-e-a-r-l and this is really fun so you do have faye um she is faye is so she's an elf living and she is betrothed to the prince. They have a mating bond put in. She does not want to. She thinks that, you know, he. she knows that his dad killed her parents and she's very upset by this. And so she very much is resistant. This is very much an enemies to lovers type situation, but they need to join forces to, you know, make good things happen. Oh, and also like if they don't do... If they don't mate by like the 25th year or something like that, then they both die. Like the mating bond is very serious. Um, 
Yeah, so apparently when you have a mating bond, if you have sex with another person, that person dies. Yeah, she didn't know that. So the first time she had sex, she thought that she was cursed and that she would kill anyone that wanted to be with her because she's got some crazy magic. And so that's what happens. But there's also these like zombie, rabid vampire things that are part of this dark one who thought they were defeated and this is just a remnant of him, but they're fighting them. Anyway, the last book really throws you for a loop because we get into some crazy reincarnation stuff and it turns out this is like a long faded trajectory and I'm very interested in number three. I want to read this so bad. And so if you have not picked up the Elf Queen yet and you are looking for something to pick up between waiting on one of the other series I mentioned, I highly recommend this right now, two books in this series. There is a third one coming out. Fingers crossed, I'll find out when soon. Okay, and the last one is The Halfling Saga. Now, The Halfling Saga right now is just book one. There's no book two. There's just book one. Um... The Halfling Saga starts with a broken blade. Now, this is very much an anti-hero. She is a trained assassin. She is like the best assassin there is. She has the position of the King's Blade, um, which is basically his top assassin. And she was recruited at a very young age. Now, this is where humans and fae do not mix. She is with the human realm. She passes as human. Turns out she's half fae. So there is, So she's charged with finding the fae rebels and bringing them to justice and all of this. But it turns out she's actually been doing things to save them for as long as she can. Um, She also has no memory of like her childhood. She was basically found in a weird place and has no memory which is why she doesn't know and that she's half fae until much later. And that's why this is called a halfling is because a halfling is someone who's half fae, half human. Um, she really kind of hides that they are not, they're looked down upon as a halfling. You're not considered a good person if you're a halfling. And so that kind of part of her, she's hidden. Um, but she gets to explore that more as things progress and she meets those rebels that she is fighting against. Now, we the next book is A Shadow Crown. It has not come out yet. It's expected this year. And I'm really interested in this because while A Broken Blade was hard to get into, um, the heroine is unlikable for a reason. She has dealt with a lot of trauma. She has a horrible job where she kills people by the at the beck and call of this despot ruler. So she kind of feels shitty. And so she struggles with alcoholism. And so at the beginning, she's basically just drunk all the time. And you see her struggling with that and really fighting to put it down because she's like, I need to be sharp. I need to be able to save myself and make a difference. And I can't do that if I'm drunk anymore. And so you really see her trying to put it aside. But obviously there's setbacks and there's a night where she just goes ham because everything's just too much for her to handle. And so she, you know, has a relapse. It's it's a lot of a struggle. So It's definitely hard to read. If that's something you're struggling with, you may not want to read that. Or you might feel that it makes her more of a sympathetic character because you have personal experience with that. Um, But it is fun. You know, epic battles of good versus evil, finding, you know, secret hidden backgrounds and secret hidden paths and long lost elves they thought were lost forever. Um, Really, really. Oh, I'm sorry. It's not, they're not fae, they're elves. So there's elves and there's humans that's a halfling. I'm sorry. I mix. I made that up about the fae. She's an elf. <laughs> um, anyway, so really interesting. This one's not particularly steamy, I will say. Like there's some good sexual tension, but it's not like, ooh, spice level. And I will say the same with um, the elf queen, not super spicy. Good scenes, good sexual tension, but not super spicy. These books are definitely more into, if you like good fantasy world building, uh, these are going to be books that you're going to enjoy. And I should say that The Halfling Saga is by Melissa Blair. So I highly recommend checking those two series out if you have not yet. I hope they start getting some love on Book Talk. They're not super spicy, which is why I think they've kind of fallen by the wayside. But also to some of the books that are talked about a lot on Books Talk, I don't find very spicy and or good. Um, Really not for me. I read the Carnival series, not spicy at all. And also, I don't like it. 
I read the whole trilogy and at the end I was like, I didn't need to read that. <laughs> so um, sorry if that's another hot take for you, but that's how I feel. So thank you for joining me on this little on D about books that I am unpatiently waiting for in the non-Regency realm. There's also a bunch of Regency books that I am desperately waiting for, and you can learn a lot more about those in the books of 2023 that we're most excited for, which we did earlier this year. That will definitely tell you more about those books that I'm excited for. Thank you all for joining me. You can check us out on social media. We're everywhere at T is in Tom and is in Nancy Strumpets. We are posting a new episode next week and it should be good. We haven't recorded it yet as of this. So just so you know, we do record these things fairly real time because life. And um, we're reading The Last Hellion by Loretta Chase and oh my God. I hadn't read this book. I hadn't even looked at it and I can't believe it took me this long. So um, I think Zoe and I had similar opinions and it's really, and should be a good episode to listen to. So if you love Loretta Chase or are interested in Loretta Chase or anything like that, um, you can check out next week's episode. Thank you again. Bye.